Hello, everyone. We are going to get started in just a minute. We're just letting all of our participants enter the Zoom. This is great. They just keep coming in. This is excellent. Well, I don't want to wait too long, so I'm going to get started. My name is Jetta Wong, and I am going to be your moderator for today. I am a policy entrepreneur focused on climate and clean energy at the Federation of American Scientists, and I am a volunteer for Clean Energy for America's Education Fund. On behalf of these two organizations, I want to welcome you to our Clean Energy Core webinar with Secretary of Energy Grand Home and a whole lineup of current and former DOE employees. Before we jump into our program, I have to do a shameless plug for our two sponsors. Uh, first of all, Clean Energy for America Education Fund is of for and by the rapidly emerging clean energy workforce, led by some of the most influential leaders across the industry. Clean Energy for America Education Fund has operations across the country, amplifying voices of clean energy workers to grow, to grow support for cl the clean energy economy. The Federation of American Scientists is a nonprofit policy research and advocacy organization founded in 1945 to meet national security challenges with evidence-based, scientifically driven, and nonpartisan policy analysis and research. FAS's day one project is dedicated to democratizing the policymaking process by working with new and expert voices across the science and technology community, helping to develop actionable policies that can improve the lives of Americans. I am so pleased that these two organizations have come together to support the mission of the Department of Energy and to recruit candidates for the Clean Energy Corps. As many of you know, the agency is looking to recruit over a thousand additional employees to implement the clean energy programs authorized in the bipartisan infrastructure law. Between the Clean Energy for America Education Fund and FAS, we are able to tap the expertise of research scientists and technical communities, as well as the private sector, bringing the full set of skills needed to staff DOE and especially the recently established Office of the Undersecretary for Infrastructure. Our agenda starts with Secretary Granholm, who will provide a broad overview of the Clean Energy Corps and the mission and goals of the Department of Energy. Then we will turn to Bindu Jacob from the new Undersecretary for Infrastructure's office, and she's going to cover specific agency staffing needs and available positions and how to apply, how to apply. And then we are going to turn to our DOE alumni panel. And as a reminder for everyone, there is a Q&A at the bottom of your screen. Please do submit your questions. The Department of Energy has a whole team of experts ready to answer your questions. Now, I would like to hand the virtual mic over to my former governor from the great state of Michigan and the best clean energy advocate out there, Secretary of Energy, Jennifer Granholm. Thank you so much for being with us, Secretary. Thank you, Jetta, for the gracious introduction and for your um, great advocacy as well. I definitely want to as well um, foot stomp your thanks of the Federation for American Scientists and uh, Clean Energy for America for, for giving us this chance to be able to spread the word about the Department of Energy's Clean Energy Core. So I'm, I'm thrilled to see such great turnout because we have just got a lot of work to do. And you know, we, as many of you know, we have got a huge agenda ahead of us. It's got this administration, the Biden administration, has the boldest climate and clean energy agenda in history. So, you know, you all have read this, I know, because you're on here and you follow it. But after the president's inauguration, we set these goals to cut greenhouse gas emissions by half in 2030, to reach 100% clean electricity by 2035, to reach net zero by 2050. That's a lot of work. That's a lot of gigawatts of clean energy we've got to add to our, our transmission grid. And so the bipartisan infrastructure law gave us the foundation, sort of the down payment for how we're gonna reach those goals. And that down payment starts with us at the steps of the Department of Energy. So the infrastructure law gives us 
uh, at the Department of Energy, $62 billion to help modernize the grid, to help uh, rebuild uh, supply chains, to revitalize American manufacturing, to increase uh, energy efficiency in homes and schools, um, and, and really to move next generation technologies like clean hydrogen and advanced nuclear from, from the field to the market. So, and so much more, We're, we, we've got a lot a lot of technology to be able to get out the door. So most of the funding from the bipartisan infrastructure law is gonna go out through competitive grants. And we want every dollar to help advance these priorities of 100% clean electricity, et cetera, as much as we possibly can. And I'm talking about job creation, uh, economic revitalization, I'm talking about equity and environmental justice, uh, and of course, I'm talking about climate change mitigation. So we, we at DOE, we are pulling out all the stops to get this right. We're in the process of uh, realigning our agency internally. We're, we are uh, making this big effort to position DOE to have a stronger hand in the later stages of technology commercialization like demonstration and deployment. We have historically been, uh, a, you know, a, research and discovery and early stage demonstration. Um, but right now we are all about deployment. And of course we're building up this clean energy core, which as Jetta said, close to a thousand new staffers who will help make sure that we direct all $62 billion of that funding toward projects with the widest and the longest lasting impact. So we're looking for, obviously we're looking for passion we're looking for passionate clean energy champions, uh, climate warriors to fill a wide range of different roles. So for example, business administration, accounting, uh, program, grant, contract, portfolio management, engineering, uh, cybersecurity, everything in between. So since we announced this core in January, we've received about 12,000 applications. It's a great pool but we need to deepen it. And that's where hopefully you come in. Maybe, um, for example, maybe you're an industry expert who can oversee big projects uh, involving multiple teams. Maybe you're adept at analyzing proposals for their potential and their potential pitfalls as well. Um, maybe you're a scientist or a researcher who can shift between the lab and the field. Whatever your background is, wh wh whether you come from academia or philanthropy or nonprofits or government or the corporate world, if you're tuning in for this webinar, something tells me that you can bring something to the table. It, you know, you're going to hear in just a minute about what exactly we are looking for. And as you'll learn, the list is, is long, but your skills are probably on it. So you, you'll also get insight uh, in this conversation that we're having right here from Z some DOE veterans, as Jetta, Jetta, Jetta said, about like what it's what is it like to work at the Department of Energy? Uh, if you haven't worked in government before, you'll get some insight about that, how folks uh, like you can bring real value to the agency and to the planet. So the American people are really counting on us uh, to get this right. Uh, the planet depends on us getting this right. And um, if you help us to get this right, I think you will have a hand in fundamentally reshaping this agency, but also making the clean energy transition irreversible. I mean, this war in Ukraine tells us that the best peace plan there is, is to make us energy secure and energy independent with clean energy. It's true for us, it's true for countries around the world. This is such an imperative. You saw the IPCC report yesterday. There is nothing more important for the future of this country and this planet than what we are undertaking right now. So I hope you'll see your applications uh, headed to the mix of that. You'll learn how to go to energy.gov slash clean energy core uh, to apply. And I just want to thank you all so much for your interest. I hope that there's a match out there. And so with that, let me pass it back over to my colleague, Bindu Jacob. Uh, Bindu is the business operations manager for our new office of the undersecretary for infrastructure. Bindu? 
Thank you so much, Secretary Granholm. And I'm so excited to be here. A big thank you to all of you who are joining us today. As Secretary said, we have been given an incredible mission by Congress to help power a clean energy revolution. So for the last several months, I have had the honor of supporting our Clean Energy Corps as the Business Operations Manager and our new Undersecretary for Infrastructure. So let me tell you a little bit about what that means and some of the things that we're trying to do. So the bipartisan infrastructure law funds energy programs across the entire innovation chain, and the legislation is transforming the department into a partner for states, communities, and industry with a set of tools to make significant progress moving the U.S. economy towards clean energy, reducing carbon emissions, and creating new jobs and economic opportunity in disadvantaged and other communities across the country. As part of our implementation efforts, we are standing up four brand new offices and staffing up in our existing offices that are responsible for implementing the bill, focused on management and coordination of our clean energy infrastructure efforts with significant centralized expertise in project and portfolio management, financial assistance, contracting, risk management, engineering, and so many other fields. So alongside our incredible team that we've put together in the new office for the Undersecretary for Infrastructure, I'm helping to make sure that we can actually get people on the ground swiftly and ensure that they're able to hit the ground running on day one as they come on board. So as the secretary described, we're using a slightly different method of recruiting than you typically see in federal hiring, so to make sure that we're able to access the incredible talent that we need for the Clean Energy Corps. So our applicant portal, which the secretary mentioned, is at www.energy.gov slash Clean Energy Corps. You're able to go in, submit your resume one time, answer a series of questions on your background, areas of interest, and then you'll be included in a resume pool where you can be considered by every single one of our hiring managers. And so in order to bring on the diverse and talented future public servants that we need to join our team, we really need people on every single level. So for instance, I'm recruiting positions for the mission support side of the team, but we also need folks who will be able to help shepherd our billion dollar deployment projects into the real world. And so there's opportunities for everyone. Initially, as we focus our recruitment efforts, we're really focused on moving forward on our program design and industry engagement work. And we're really looking to develop our funding opportunity announcements initially. So we're really trying to find thought leaders to help us develop community forward approaches and demonstration and deployment. We need individuals with a demonstrated track record in program strategy and design. Some of the critical skill sets that we need today or individuals with state and local policy expertise in clean energy, expertise in building efficiency, senior engineers with technical expertise to lead our efforts deploying our various technologies. Of course, we need acquisition experts to help us actually develop the funding opportunity announcements. And as our teams start to get built out, we're also gonna begin expanding our hiring efforts. So while we're prioritizing a certain set of positions today, we also expect to start moving forward with some big hiring waves over the next six months as we bring on grant and project managers, our communication and engagement teams, our business analysts, and all the positions that we need to really help us actually get the money out the door and monitor the progress of our execution. So I'm really excited to have the opportunity to join all of you here today and join this amazing crew that we're gonna have of DOE alumni, most of which I've had an opportunity to work with. Um, so I really look forward to talking more about why DOE is just about the best place in the world to be right now if you're passionate about clean energy and saving the planet. So back to you, Jetta. All right. All right, thank you so much, Bindu. It is great to see you again. It's great to have your enthusiasm at the Department of Energy. And thank you so much for all of your work to help put together that clean energy portal. Um, I hope that you're able to stay on and answer some questions in the Q&A box. Um, and as for right now, we are going to turn to our DOE alumni panel. Uh, as Binder said, um, I've also had a chance to work with these amazing individuals. Um, so it was wonderful to bring them all back together. Um, their eagerness to participate in this event and tell you about their stories, about their time at the Department of Energy really says a lot about how DOE has impacted their careers. So I'm going to take a quick second and introduce all three of them. Um, their bios are on our registration page, so please do check out more information on them um, on that page. And I'm going to start out first uh, with introducing Sarah Olasak, Manager of Transportation Electrification at Duquesne Light Company. Then we will go to Min Lee. 
General Manager for Energy Services for the Los Angeles County Internal Services Department. And finally, we will hear from Margaret Schaus, Chief Financial Officer for NASA. Sarah, the mic is yours. Thanks, Jetta. Um, so glad to see such a great turnout today. Um, so uh, when I was at the Department of Energy, um, I was joining on at a pivotal point quite similar to where we're at today. Congress had just approved the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act, and we needed lots of people to implement it. So I responded to that call to action and joined, my, um, joined the organization as a civil servant. Over the course of a decade, I worked in the Office of Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy, and I went from serving as a special assistant to our principal deputy assistant secretary to overseeing the technical review of a billion dollar EV manufacturing loan program to becoming a subject matter expert on the deployment of EV charging stations. And towards the end, I even got to serve an assignment to the White House advising on best practices and policy for electrifying the federal fleet. Today, I work at Duquesne Light Company, which is the electric utility that serves my hometown of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And I took what I learned at DOE and now I'm out here kind of in the real world application getting to um, serve my community uh, in this way. And I'll just end by saying that the Department of Energy to me, why is it you know, such a great employment opportunity? And what it really comes down to is exposure. At DOE, you have the ability to quickly and deeply gain or build upon your subject matter expertise on clean energy issues while working along the nation's leaders from government, the national labs, academia, industry, and communities. So when it really comes to clean energy and making an impact, I believe that DOE is the room where it happens. And I think that we really need you to be in that room. So I hope that today you uh, leave with a, with a plan to, uh, to apply. So thank you. Yes, hi, good morning. Um, my name is Min Lee and um, I think Sarah said it great. And I have a similar career trajectory at the DOE uh, that Sarah described because I joined the Department of Energy um, during that uh, very critical uh, time period, the Recovery Act, and um, uh, similar to the moment that we are in right now. And I, I think there's one word, I don't know how many of you uh, might remember the movie, The Graduate, but the word is plastics. And, uh, and today, if you were to say, if you were to have that movie, um, the word would be clean energy. And so uh, this is the moment um, and the Department of Energy is, uh, is at the center of it. When I joined the Department of Energy, uh, I came from the private sector. Um, I helped scale, um, you know, the semiconductor industry and, and the solar industry uh, in my respective uh, areas over a dozen years to scale manufacturing, to scale uh, new technologies and ramp that you know, in, in some cases by over two orders of magnitude. And, and that's really where I think the Department of Energy really shines. Um, you know, historically, Department of Energy has focused a lot on the earlier stage research. And what you heard from the secretary here is that uh, there is a greater need uh, to understand the complete ecosystem all the way from you know, the beginning part, earlier stage research to scaling to large scale manufacturing. And, and that's where we need individuals, we need people uh, with the skill set that uh, can uh, that understands what it takes to build that ecosystem, what it takes to scale, and what it takes to support uh, the organizations that are creating jobs uh, right here, uh, you know, in the U.S. And so, um, you know, I, I think that's extremely important to have those individuals, uh, you know, with those um, uh, with that knowledge. My time at the Department of Energy was amazing. I got to work with. It, incredibly talented individuals within the government as well as uh, outside the government, you know, at our national labs, at our universities, uh, you know, in the private sector. The, your time at the Department of Energy will give you a big picture perspective, more so than any one 
organization that you might be in. And so uh, I think that I think you want to uh, think about uh, how to broaden your perspective, how to utilize what you already the skills that you already have in in whatever industry you might be in, but then to uh, take a step back and broaden that perspective, develop the relationships, develop the skills uh, that will allow you to, to go beyond. Thank you. Sorry, let me unmute myself. Hi, everyone. I'm Margaret Schaus. I'm delighted to be joining this uh, panel. It's like a Department of Energy reunion to be here. Um, I started my government research and development and innovation career at the Department of Energy. Uh, I had multiple careers under one roof where I was uh, in the applied energy programs, uh, primarily in the Office of Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy, working on the program management side, uh, the business operations side, and overseeing research and development programs as well. Uh, like Min and Sarah, I was there during the height of the Recovery Act, uh, which is not, sim not dissimilar to uh, what the department is facing now with uh, this historic investment in clean energy and the great opportunities that we have to help advance the nation's priorities to get to net zero emissions uh, by 2050. Um, since then, I uh, took all the great things I learned at the Department of Energy. I was at the Department of Defense and the uh, Office of the Undersecretary for Research and Engineering, which is the Chief Technology Officer for the DOD. And I am currently the Chief Financial Officer at NASA. So really look forward to engaging with all of you and telling you more about how you can all have great careers at Department of Energy as well. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much to our DOE alumni. I'm actually going to bring all three of you back onto Spotlight here so we can get some questions, get some questions. from the audience. I will ask you to make sure you mute so there's no echo for everyone. All right. And Sarah, where are you? There you are. Excellent. Good. Um, so you've heard from our amazing DOE alumni. We are going to take some questions. I see that a lot of questions have already been answered. Thank you to our DOE team for supplying answers to those. Um, I'm going to take the moderator's prerogative and ask um, the first question because I think um, we'll, we'll let some more populate over here. Tell us, and, and if all three of you can answer this really quickly so we can get through everyone. Um, Tell us about a time you were asked to deliver work on a particularly exciting DOE initiative. What did you learn and what lessons do you still hold today from this experience? I'll, I'll try to take the first uh, stab at that. Um, so I joined the Department of Energy basically in, I think, December 2009. And uh, within a month, the Secretary of Energy calls, my, calls me up and says, I, I want you to plan for a dollar a watt solar. How do we get to a dollar a watt solar? And that eventually became the Sunshine Initiative. That was the start of, I, I think, years of sleepless nights, but amazing work. We got to uh, work on s such challenging problems. You know, at the time, it was really to drive down the cost of, of solar energy to the point where it's grid uh, um, you know, grid parity. And so, um, you know, I, I won't go on because I'll give the others uh, a chance to say, but that was just a phenomenal uh, period of, of time in my life and, and in, in the industry to help guide the solar industry uh, towards, um, you know, significant cost reductions in such a short period of time. I do remember that time. It was a very busy time. Thank you for all your work there, Min. Uh, Margaret, do you want to go? Sure, uh, I'll continue to pull on the thread of the Recovery Act because it was, it was a, at that time a $36 billion plus investment at the Department of Energy to help create shovel-ready projects and stimulate um, all the great things that the department has achieved in clean energy on the renewable power side, transportation, energy efficiency, um, and, and all the other areas. And so uh, perhaps not unlike what folks who uh, are experiencing now or will be experiencing, you have, of course, a, a major challenge and responsibility to think, how am I going to invest? How are we as the department going to invest these funds wisely on behalf of the nation? And so we were just working around the clock to 
develop uh, competitive funding opportunity announcements, you know, identifying the scope for work across all of the energy efficiency and renewable energy offices. And uh, it takes a, a monumental team of experts to put that together. So um, when Bindu and the secretary were talking about just the vast array of expertise that is needed, I would say that um, you get to know people very quickly when you're all uh, rowing in that same direction. So I had such a wonderful opportunity to meet so many technical experts, so many of the procurement experts in wonderful places like our Golden Office at the uh, National Energy Technology Laboratory and just um, have such a wonderful sense of people trying to achieve important things under uh, intense deadlines uh, to do amazing things for the country. I think that was uh, at a high level, one of the most uh, amazing things I was able to do at DOE. Yeah, I'll wrap up with a quick story. So um, the Recovery Act was coming, implementation period was coming to a close and we were starting to get data back. And what is so important about that period of time is to say, what's next? And how do we continue to make an impact and build upon this? And one of the things that we were seeing with EV charging was this pyramid emerged from the National Labs data. And it said, the most important place to put charging stations is at people's homes. The second most important place is workplaces. Now, this was pre-pandemic, it was a little bit different of a time, but the Secretary of Energy challenged us at that time to say, what can we do at the national level at the Department of Energy to shine a spotlight on the importance of workplace charging? And out of that was one of the biggest things that I worked on during my period of time there, which was standing up the workplace charging challenge and really what that ultimately was, was stakeholder convening and challenging industry to recognize their role and their importance. And that entire effort had, you know, we honestly had probably maybe $10,000 a year budget. But what we did through that was the stakeholder convening and drawing attention to the issue at hand. And that's the power of the Department of Energy that, um, that I think that people will continue to build upon. Awesome. Thank you so much for both uh, for all those answers. Uh, I, I see one question that came through on the chat, and I just want to clarify, yes, this is a webinar uh, to join the US Department of Energy to be employed by DOE. Um, and you can do that through the clean energy portal. Um, and it's energy.gov backslash clean energy core. Uh, and I think it's been posted into the chat a couple of different times. So definitely check out that information. And if you have specific questions, I can see a bunch of things are being asked in the Q and A about exactly how to apply um, and those kind of, you know, are there independent contractors, et cetera, being hired. So definitely get those questions there. Um, I'm going to ask another question uh, that, you know, there are a lot of people um, that have been working at universities, they're researchers, or they're from the private sector, not a lot of people that have worked in the federal government. And so I'd like to hear, um, you know, what are some strategies that you used um, to really understand the Department of Energy and, and really uh, be successful in the federal workforce? Margaret. Sure, I'll, I'll take that one. Um, you know, it really is the relationships that you can build. There is so much tremendous expertise at DOE, and I'm sure at every workplace. It's that uh, strategy of finding who are the people who know how things get done. And uh, DOE, I found to be such a collegial place that I think that um, that will be easily done because, uh, again, we all share the same goals of uh, being able to, to achieve these uh, clean energy um, transformations for the United States. And it, it's so wonderful to be able to have this opportunity to attract folks in the private sector or academia or other um, sectors, including folks in government, because I think that to implement and execute something like this, you need people who will think differently and outside the box, people who will know how to attract some non-traditional performers uh, to help us achieve these goals, people who can help us think differently um, and more, more efficiently even about how we um, advertise and compete what we do to other performers to make them more likely to want to partner with us. Uh, 
I'd add that uh, one of the best things that you can do when you arrive at the Department of Energy is tap into this incredible knowledge base of people who have been there and been, you know, in the trenches working for decades. And um, that is, that's, that's a master's class in of itself, right, is you're, you're learning and the things that these folks have been through. You know, we, I worked right alongside um, men and women who had not just been working on EVs during, you know, the Recovery Act, but they were there working on battery research 30 years ago. And that's how you learn how to get stuff done is by tapping into that knowledge base. And, and finally, I'd like to, to add that, um, you know, what you'll find is, is people, colleagues who are so dedicated to the mission, okay? Um, because the work that the DOE does is oftentimes behind the scenes. Okay, but the impact that you will have on whole industries, on the entire economy is quite significant. Okay, and, and so I mentioned earlier about, you know, Sunshot. Right now, the DOE is launching multiple energy earth shots, right? And so, so we're going to have, the DOE is going to have impact across broader sectors, economies. It could potentially mean, mean millions of jobs. And so think about, you know, the time that you spend there about impacting potentially careers families, you know, average Americans, everyday Americans, and, and helping them lower their energy costs, helping lower their, uh, their pollution. And so uh, the importance of the work, you'll see that in everyone you meet at the Department of Energy, they understand the mission, they understand, and, and it's behind the scenes, but it is so important for our country. I, I completely agree. Thank you so much for all those. I I know it, it, all of you have talked about working with your colleagues there um, and how amazing your time has been. And I agree, my time at the department was amazing working with all of you. I, we got a question, and I think is a good question is, why did you leave? Sarah? So I like to say that, um, you know, I, I worked my 10 years at DOE along the TRL pipeline, the technology readiness level pipeline. And towards the, the end of my time there, I was starting to work a lot more with the electric utility industry. And I, I wouldn't say that I mastered the system that is the federal government by any means, but I got a pretty steep you know, understanding of that system. And I was ready to start to learn a new system. And the system that I was really excited to learn about was the electric utility grid. And um, that is, you know, another really important system for clean energy. And um, I also was really interested in making an impact at home. And I decided to take what I was able to learn in Washington and see if I could support my hometown and my community and um, be an implementer there and a change maker there. And for the last four years I have, and it's been incredibly rewarding. And people ask me all the time if I'll go back to DOE in Washington. And I'm like, definitely not counting it out. So uh, don't tell my current boss that. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's, been, it's very tempting and I, I love watching what's happening now. And did you hear that? Sarah's ready. Um, all right, uh, Min, Margaret, you wanna talk about, why did you leave DOE? You loved it so much. I, I truly loved it. And, um, but, you know, I think you can have an impact in lots of different roles around, uh, around the country, around the world. And, um, and so for me personally, um, life beckons. Okay? And so I followed my wife to, she, she's a professor uh, in LA and I was actually commuting back and forth between LA and DC and, and my carbon footprint was getting too high. And so I decided to, uh, to stay put in one location. And that I'll needed to be, you know, say. where my, my family went. I'll just quickly Mark. say, I had energy for almost a decade. That's the longest I've, um, been at any organization, which I think uh, speaks to what a wonderful career I had there. And I just um, had the opportunity uh, for another role at the Department of Defense. But uh, I still I still love uh, chatting with all my DOE friends and seeing what's happening over in Forestville. Thank you. Uh, so 
I, we have a question that came in through the chat, and I, I think it's a good one because I know that the Department of Energy is really looking to, to you know, broaden its expertise, as you've heard multiple times, and for a long time, it's been very much a basic science organization, which is at the core of, you know, moving new technologies in the market, which is extremely important. But we also have some questions of like, if you're already in the private sector, you know, what does that mean? Like, is, is it, what will you get out of going to the Department of Energy? Um, and, and why would that be valuable? And, and Min, you came from the private sector. Can you talk a little bit about that? Um Yes, thank you. And, and I, I tried to touch base upon that earlier, uh, but the private sector experience that you might have um, uh, w will be extremely valuable because you understand how things are made, uh, how things are made, and hopefully in America, what it takes to make things in, in America, and understanding the supply chains, understanding the logistics, all that information is extremely valuable uh, because the Department of Energy actually wants to support that because we, the Department of Energy wants to help build that uh, that industry base uh, for clean energy because that's what's needed to scale. Uh, uh, it, it's it's not great if we uh, scale, you know, wind turbines and solar panels and EV manufacturing overseas, right? We want to see the benefits of that actually accrue and create jobs, you know, um, domestically as well. And so, understanding that, so your private sector experience is extremely valuable, and and that's where I came from uh, before I joined the Department of Energy. Thank you for that. Yeah, that's really important for DOE and for all of our audience, um, especially from the Clean Energy for America Education Fund people that are a lot, of, a lot coming from the private sector there. You know, um, I, I think it's really important to also recognize that, we're, that as Bindu said, there's gonna be a variety of different positions that DOE is trying to fill at all different levels. Um, but I know that there is a real interest, of course, in hiring some managers. Can can any of you talk about, I Min, I, I think you can, I, I think all of you can, talk about what is it like to be a manager in the federal government? Um, I'm, I'm not exactly sure how to answer that question, but I will say that, um, uh, you know, when you have such an amazing team uh, working with you, managing is actually fairly easy. So, um, and, and that I had in spades at the Department of Energy, uh, you know, from, you know, our really talented and, and brilliant scientists at the national labs to, uh, you know, recruiting, uh, you know, really great, uh, you know, people from a diversified background. And, and, and I think Bindu said it, you know, best earlier, the DOE is not looking for just one type of person. Okay, one type of uh, someone with one type of career. It takes a diversity of thought, okay, in order to, to make something great. And so it's really about building that team that has people from different perspectives. Yes, we want the scientists, but we also want the engineers. We also want you know, people with manufacturing experience. We also want people with um, uh, finance, accounting, auditing experience. So there's a lot, you'll get to work with lots of people and, and managing is really about enabling all those those people to collide in a good way and build something great out of it. Yeah, uh, I would also, add. Oh, go ahead, Sarah. No, I'm. I wasn't a people leader when I was at the Department of Energy, but I am one now. And looking back, I can honestly say that some of the most impactful people that I worked under there were not engineers and we're not PhD scientists. They were incredible people leaders and DOE needs those people very badly. <laughs> and especially for the initiatives that are in front of them today. So people leaders are, are really valued. And I'll just add to that, uh, uh, agree with everything Min and Sarah said, to add a slightly different spin to management. Uh, there was an opportunity to manage projects and also programs. So uh, I uh, managed programs uh, as part of my time at Department of Energy. And that's where you could look at, you know, a portfolio of similar projects. Maybe it's under, you know, um, you know, a subset of the solar program or any other energy efficiency or renewable power program where you're looking at a suite of projects that are collectively trying to deliver a particular objective or scope. Um, however you developed it in their, your funding opportunity. And I think um, with overseeing programs, it's a wonderful way to both, um, you know, work with all of the 
um, wonderful staff you have to manage those projects, to make sure that you are tracking the delivery against schedule um, and milestones. And so I, I think of management also in that perspective of being able to have a, a, a coherent portfolio that you are kind of managing and tracking and being the expert on and being able to uh, report up the chain how, how those achievements and that progress is making a difference in your organization's goals. And uh, I'll even uh, pivot back to the question about the importance of having folks who have an industry background perspective you know, I worked for many wonderful people at Energy who brought that background to bear uh, in our development of, again, those funding opportunities. And they had that wonderful perspective of being able to really hold our performers' feet to the fire when it came to milestone delivery and making sure that uh, there is that, um, uh, that ability to scope a project in a way that really aligned with how we would expect things to turn out. So knowing what is the, what is the status quo but what is then what energy would want to invest in, which is outside the status quo? What are those high risk um, projects that really make sense for federal investment so that we can take um, that opportunity to reduce the risk and cost uh, where industry might not be able to? And so having, having that industry perspective, especially as the secretary mentioned that uh, DOE is pushing even further into deployment, which was less common when I was there, where we would uh, sort of stop short at demonstration and hope that we uh, would bring it uh, to a maturity level than where industry would want to then pick it up, invest and bring it over the valley of death. Awesome. Thank you, Margaret. That, that was great. Really important, especially for the new office of the Undersecretary for Infrastructure, where they're really going to be focused on the deployment side like you said. So we have just a couple minutes left. I'm going to do one last quick question. If you could say why you loved the Department of Energy in one or two words, what would that be? And we're going to start with Min, just you're in the corner there. So. Uh, impact. Wait, what was it? Impact. You can have impact. A yes. big impact. Sarah. The people and friends that I met. Margaret? I'm, I'm echoing people. Excellent. Excellent. Well, let me th say thank you to our DOE alumni. You heard it here. Uh, it's all about the people. It's all about the impact. Um, I, I thank you so much, all three of you, for joining us today. It's great to see you all again. Um, keep up the amazing work. Um, and now I'm going to do a quick uh, closeout of our session. We have two minutes left. Um, and if I could have Will bring up our slide here. Thank you so much. So kind of just to really recap, uh, you can be part of the solution to our climate crisis by being a part of the DOE Clean Energy Core. As you can see on the screen, this is where you go. I think it's been in the chat a number of times today. Please do use our hashtag CE4A-FAS um, as your referral code. So the Department of Energy knows how you found out about the portal uh, and, and they made it really easy. Just put it into this field right here. Uh, and finally, I just wanna say again, thank you to the US Department of Energy, to the secretary, to all the DOE speakers for participating today and telling your stories about the Department of Energy. Thank you uh, to the Clean Energy for America Education Fund and the Federation of American Scientists. Hopefully look for some more events from us soon. And a big thank you to our participants for your interest in joining the US Department of Energy. This is your opportunity to make a difference, be a part of the clean energy revolution and fight against climate change. And with that, we're gonna end this webinar. Thank you all for being with us today.